on the street is Mafia. A brave Sicilian mayor leads a deadly war on crime. West 57, Wednesday. On the young and the restless, caught in a web of lies and deceit. You take your father's wife, you try to take somebody's life. Jack Abbott surrenders. Poor Jack. What a shame. On the young and the restless. For you, Dad. For you. In thy heat of it. Weekdays. This is CBS. Liberty Weekend brought a calm to New York and the nation. A calm shattered today when a man used a sword to slash and kill people aboard the Staten Island Ferry. That's one of the stories we'll bring you on tonight's 10 p.m. report. Also tonight, stocks fall, Graham Rudman fails. The National Football League plans mandatory drug tests and we'll get some Vikings reactions. Drivers beware, Interstate 94 is the next site of construction delays. And the gasoline product right off the farm is not making it to your car. The 10 p.m. report is coming up next. We're tossing them fresh, tossing them crisp. We're tossing new McDonald's shrimp salad. New McDonald's chef salad. New McDonald's garden salad. Maybe a salad. It's a good time oh, for the great taste. Shrimp salad, chef salad, garden salad. Love McDonald's. You know, I love everything about this car. New Chevy Nova. It's a lot more than you'd expect for the price. It's a darn good car for the money. Well, you sold me. And I really like the way it's built. Oh, it really moves. 95% <laughs> of Chevy Nova owners would recommend their new Nova to a friend. There's so much room. Oh, I thought you'd like it. And it doesn't cost much to keep it filled either. New Nova. It's a lot more than you'd expect for the price. Drive today, Chevy. Live today, Chevy. Nova. Hi, I'm Cal Ludeman. I share the sense of pride and hopes of Minnesota people. But I've seen the Iron Range waiting for change. And I've seen main streets with doors locked and windows boarded up. And I've seen farmers hoping for a change before it's too late. But I also see strong and hardy people, accustomed to hard work and most of all accustomed to action. The Ludeman administration will lead Minnesota forward, working together to solve our problems, to make our state whole again. Oh my God! Oh my God! In the next 48 hours, they're gonna be shot at, hijacked, marooned, lost in the jungle, busted out of jail. Duck! Duck? No wonder their divorce isn't working. Tom Cotty, Terry Garr, Paul Rodriguez, and Christopher Lloyd. Miracles, rated PG. Starts Friday, July 11th at a theater near you. You are watching WCCO Television, Minneapolis, St. Paul. This is the 10 p.m. Report. The nation's investors and political leaders have money on their minds tonight, and for good reason. The stock market today took its biggest one-day point drop in history. And the Supreme Court ruled today that part of the law, which would automatically cut and balance the federal budget, is not constitutional. Money, millions of dollars at stake in these two stories. Good evening, everyone. I'm Mike Walcher, and tonight for Pat Miles. First, we begin with the stock market. It is, in fact, the biggest point drop, but not the biggest percentage drop, meaning no one is comparing this to the stock market crash of 1929. Here are the numbers for today. When the stock market shut down for the day, the Dow Jones Industrial Averages had fallen nearly 62 points, a fall of about 3% of its total. Now, if it were to match the crash, it would have to fall 250 points. Brokers blamed the drop on pessimism over the economy and poor predictions from key analysts. Now for the Supreme Court decision, justices ruled today in a 7-2 decision that the Graham-Rudman budget balancing plan did not maintain the balances of power guaranteed in our Constitution. The law would have given power to the Comptroller General to make cross-the-board cuts when needed to keep the budget in check. But the Comptroller General works for the legislative branch, and the court says he would be taking a job meant for the executive branch of government. But the Graham-Rudman idea is not dead. As Skip Losher reports from Washington. All the court struck down was the provision triggering automatic across-the-board spending cuts. 
to ensure that deficit reduction goals or targets are met. The targets are enshrined in law. Congress is still committed by law to meet the goals, and if it can't do it any other way, it can still vote across the board cuts. I think Congress will have trouble dropping that ball or trying to lateral it to someone else. We all want a balanced budget, uh, but we have to be willing to make the decisions to get there. We can't, uh, that isn't going to be uh, placed an automatic pilot uh, uh, through a legislative vegematic known as Graham Rudman. Unless Senate backers can find and push through a constitutional way to restore the automatic cuts, Congress will have to wield the axe. The only way we're going to reduce the federal deficit is for Congress to face up to it. And uh, I think that may be the, uh, the one positive uh, thing about the Supreme Court's decision. We, we can't hide. And the White House likes it that way. The President and Congress were both elected by the American people to make these choices, and he is calling upon Congress to discharge its responsibilities and redeem this pledge. The President never liked the automatic spending cuts anyway, because 50% of them would have come from defense. Now, without them, some say he hopes domestic programs will take the biggest hit. Skip Locher, CCO News, Washington. The United States Supreme Court refused today to hear an appeal in a Minnesota case. Owners of the Twin Cities-based sports and health clubs wanted the court to overturn a ruling which prevents them from requiring employees to attend Bible classes. And the club was using the classes as a basis for hiring and firing. A local judge had ordered sports and health clubs to pay a $300 a day fine for discrimination, and the club took that issue to the State Court of Appeals today. The commissioner of the National Football League tonight says he will enforce mandatory drug tests for players starting this season. Ralph John Fritz here tonight with the details of that startling statement. Don, immediately we should emphasize that the commissioner would like to institute mandatory drug testing, but the NFL Players Union may temper Roselle's proposal. However, the commissioner is clear on what he believes is under his jurisdiction. The bargaining agreement and the Constitution and bylaws gives me the obligation and authority to protect the health and welfare of the players. Testing would begin when training camps open around the league this month. The league stresses what they want, testing independent of clubs and commissioners. We are looking at this from the point of view of protecting the health of the individual player and of course anybody he might hurt on the field because of his drug use. In other words, this is a health problem. According to the plan, every player in the league would be tested, including two unscheduled tests. Punishment would accompany medical care. First offenders would be counseled, second offenders suspended, third offenders banned from the National Football League. Finally, college players eligible for the draft could also be tested. My, how times have changed since the days Jerry Burns first arrived on the NFL scene. As you say, uh, in our era, uh, drugs were really not a, a, any particular uh, concern. Uh, they are more and more of a concern to our society today. Commissioner Pete Rozelle says that it's not an employer-employee situation. The uh, people in the, uh, in the uh, other end of the spectrum, the players, do not think so. We will hear from the player, Greg Coleman, as well as management Mike Lynn a bit later on. All right. Thank you very much, Ralph. Thursday afternoon, we should know if Minneapolis will get a premier sporting event, college basketball's Final Four. Tonight, Governor Rudy Perpich and University of Minnesota President Ken Keller returned from making a pitch to the NCAA in California. Minneapolis is competing with Indianapolis for the Final Four in 1991. The governor says Minnesota made a pretty good presentation to the NCAA. Well, uh, we had a very, very successful, the most successful ever uh, round one and two uh, back in March. I think if the uh, Sports Facilities Commission presented uh, the um, NCAA a check for $750,000, so it really was a winner. Governor Perpich says the Final Four would bring more tourist dollars to the state of Minnesota than even a Super Bowl. The Statue of Liberty celebration in the New York Harbor went without a hitch. The first day after did not. A person aboard the Staten Island Ferry took out a two-foot sword and randomly started slashing people who were aboard. Two people died, nine others were injured. Police had to take the suspect away in a body bag. He is Juan Gonzalez, a Cuban refugee who came to this country in the Mariel boat lift. He said God had told him to do this. One of the women slashed says when the man pulled out the sword, she thought it was part of the festivities from the Liberty weekend. John Scruggs will testify tomorrow in his own defense. 
He's the man accused of ordering three other gang members to kill Christine Kreitz last fall. Today, a Disciples gang member from Chicago testified John Scruggs did not appear to be the leader of the gang in Minneapolis. Trish Van Pilsen reports. 23-year-old Robert Brem is a member of the Disciples Gang in Chicago. Brem testified he went to a couple of gang meetings in Minneapolis last summer. John Scruggs, he said, did not appear to be in charge. In fact, Brem said Mary Braxton, or Mama G, quote, was holding it down. She was calling the shots. Brem said he saw Braxton order six other gang members to beat someone who'd violated a gang rule. Quote, she picked out six people, Brem testified. She said to beat him two at a time. Braxton is one of the state's key witnesses. She testified Scruggs ordered her and two others to kill Kreitz, and she denied having any influence in the gang. The defense claims Braxton may have planned the killing. Brem also testified Scruggs tried to discourage violence between rival gangs at a party shortly before Kreitz's death. Quote, they was going to go crazy. He tried to calm everybody down. In cross-examination, the prosecutor pointed out Brem was involved with the gang last summer. The state's witnesses have testified Scruggs did not take control of the gang until the fall. Prosecutor George Woodseth also implied Brem was testifying to help Scruggs, a fellow gang member. A former neighbor of Mary Braxton's also took the stand. She testified she didn't see Scruggs at Braxton's house the night Kreitz was killed, the night he allegedly told Braxton and the others to shoot her. Little of today's testimony actually dealt directly with the Kreitz murder. Rather, it was part of defense attorneys' efforts to discredit the state's witnesses and paint a positive picture of John Scruggs. Trish Van Pilsen, WCCO Television News, Minneapolis. A Lesseur woman is one of six people to survive two weeks aboard a life raft in the Pacific Ocean. 20-year-old Ann McGuire was working on a fish processing boat when it sank 580 miles off the Big Island of Hawaii June 21st. Two of her crewmates, including the vessel's captain, were not on board when rescuers arrived on July 5th. In the uh, days to follow, the uh, captain's condition got worse. Uh, he was apparently suffering from extreme dehydration and seasickness along with his uh, injuries sustained in the sinking and he finally uh, died uh, around July 4th and was buried at sea by his crew members uh, in the afternoon of July 4th. Another crew mate who went searching for help is still missing. Ms. McGuire, the only woman on board, is in satisfactory condition at a Honolulu hospital. McGuire's family lives in Lesua. Now ahead on the 10 p.m. report, students who just want to get by. And students who want something extra. We'll report on a new high school for the performing arts. Also ahead, the image of the candidate as he appears on television. We shouldn't look at this house again. It's too perfect. That loan is not going to go through. We'll work with you. Sure. I just know it. I never get anything this perfect. Hey. We'll hey. do our best. By the way, Norwest called this morning. You just got your perfect house. We know the way. We are Norwest. <laughs> when you dip in your spoon and the taste makes you swoon, that's your love. When the taste makes you cry, it's so good you could die for gelati. The favorite frozen dessert of Italy is yours to enjoy. Gelati da. Authentic Italian gelati made with all natural imported flavorings. Try all the incredibly vibrant flavors. When it's love that you seek, taste the flavor unique. Try gelati da. Did you know that Ramsey Hospital can take care of any medical problem? <laughs> There's one place that can take care of whatever comes up. Darlene. St. Paul Ramsey Medical Center and Ramsey Clinic. The pros. Ever since the final curtain fell on the Children's Theater School last March, there's been a void in the performing arts community in the Twin Cities. But come this fall, a new theater school will make its debut. A group of parents of youngsters who once attended the Children's Theater School of Minneapolis are now founding the Minnesota Conservatory of the Performing Arts. 
They hope to produce its opening season in a remodeled building in St. Paul's Lower Town District. Now, it will offer youngsters the training they'll need for a future on stage and screen. The conservatory's founders also envision the students acting in community theater productions. They'll figure they'd need about 40 students to break even. Annual tuition will run $5,000. Two schools for Indian students in the Twin Cities are fighting to survive. Fighting in federal court for money they claim the Reagan administration has wrongfully denied them. The Red School House in St. Paul and Heart of the Earth School in Minneapolis charged they were denied $1.5 million in grants last school year. Their suit against the U.S. Department of Education went to trial in St. Paul today. I believe they would like to see these Indian-controlled Indian schools gone. There's no evidence of any conspiracy, uh, nor um, do I think they're the plaintiffs will be able to present any evidence of a conspiracy because we don't think that there's any kind of conspiracy. Discrimination? None at all. The schools want the one and a half million dollars they didn't get last year. The trial should last all this week. Cal Ludeman was among the Republican endorsed candidates for constitutional office making their campaigns official today. The candidate for governor shelled out $150 and registered his campaign at the Secretary of State's office. The rest of the official IR ticket, with the exception of the Attorney General candidate Lou Freeman, joined in today's filing as well. Ludeman unveiled two things today, plans to debate his likely IR gubernatorial primary opponent Jim Lindau, and his new TV ads. Ludeman says he'll probably debate the Bloomington mayor twice before the September primary, once in his hometown of Tracy, once on Lindau's home turf of Bloomington. Before that, he hopes to gain greater recognition from a new television advertising campaign. Pat Kessler reports. At holiday parades last weekend, Cal Ludeman says people called him Hal and Sal and Ludafisk, so they're getting the general idea. But he's hoping his new television commercials will help more people get it right. Hi, I'm Cal Ludeman. The Get Acquainted ads will air on 14 TV stations for the next two weeks. The image he's trying to project, says the conservative from Tracy, is pure Minnesota. The Ludeman administration will lead Minnesota forward, working together to solve our problems, to make our state whole again. You can be a conservative and still smile and still be friendly, you know. Even as he points with pride to his conservative stripes, Ludeman is moving ever so slightly toward the center. He said today he won't waste time on conservative causes that won't pass. I still have a pretty firm uh, belief in what government can do and should do. And uh, the only thing that would temper that would be on what, what can be done, not what should be done. But Ludeman's likely primary opponent, Bloomington Mayor James Lindau, says Ludeman is hiding his conservatism behind a warm and fuzzy facade. Minnesotans, said a Lindau spokesman, don't want a libertarian or a quasi-libertarian. The Ludeman ads will cost about $42,000, a major expense in any campaign. But the man who won IR endorsement on a shoestring budget now says contributions are coming in at a rate of $11,000 a day. And after two weeks, he says he's got about $200,000 in the bank. Pat Kessler, WCCO Television News. The saying goes, there are two seasons in the Twin Cities, winter and road repair. And the second season begins on I-94 this Friday night as the Department of Transportation starts repaving the highway. Crews will work on the eastbound lane starting simultaneously at the Lowry Tunnel in Minneapolis and at the Mississippi River, moving towards Snelling Avenue in St. Paul. Officials hope to cut delays and driver irritability by scheduling the repairs only on the weekends. But it will be round the clock, 7 p.m. Friday until 5.30 on Monday morning. It is a six-week-long project. It will cost around $1 million. And certainly summer is no time to be sitting in road repair traffic. No. When the 10 p.m. report continues, Bud Crailing with the weather forecast and a look at the kind of mess a quarter of a million pe hungry people live behind. Now, the ultimate gasoline is here. Introducing new Amoco Ultimate. The engine cleaning gasoline for pure power and performance. Certified pure by Amoco, right on the pump. It's the ultimate engine cleaning gasoline. New Amoco Ultimate. The gasoline as good as its name. Your car knows. This is Charlie Boone of WCCO Radio. Say, did you know that you can tell a lot about someone's personality by the perfume or cologne that person wears? Tomorrow morning at 10, we'll hear more when perfume expert Teresa Davis joins me on the Charlie Boone Show. For more CCO Radio information, 
call the connection at 922-9000. Well, what can we do for you? My name is John, and uh, I'd like to explain. When you go to some banks to borrow money, the way you're treated is almost criminal. What do you want the money for? Well, I'd like to buy it. What a, makes you think we should give you the money? Well, I thought you were the ones who had it. That's... What is this? Just sign it. What? I... Escape to TCF. We'll give you an answer within eight hours on all kinds of loans. How long will it take? Following the 10 p.m. report. The sounds of jazz, gospel, soul, and inspiration. The sounds that can be heard as part of Soul Inspiration 13 every night from now through Sunday. The singing, festivities, playing take place beginning at 7 p.m. behind the Park Avenue Methodist Church in Minneapolis. Some of the featured artists include Tony Campolo, The Winans, and the second chapter of Axe Group. Soul Lib is going on now, but two other parties are in the before and after stages. Cleanup crews are getting rid of the leftovers from the Taste of Minnesota Festival held at the state capitol. And it was quite a dinner party indeed. 225,000 guests drank 170,000 cans of pump. Any of the people pushing the brooms today could attest to the fact that the partiers left behind 30 tons of garbage. It's almost state fair time again, and officials are getting ready for the massive event. Today, they started taking job applications. Anyone over the age of 16 can apply for a job. Just go to the State Fair's employment office in the 4-H building in Falcon Heights. It is open Monday through Friday, 8 in the morning until 5.30 p.m. And the State Fair opens for visitors on August 21st. Our first story about the State Fair. <laughs> the Prado Pups are not far behind. <laughs> no, no. It's coming oh, up, isn't it, bud? State Fair weather. We're, we're working on it right now. What a night to sit out on the screen porch tonight. 74 degrees, a little breeze out of the southeast, four miles an hour, and tell a few stories about past history, that hot summer of 1936. I bring it up because <laughs> there is a connection here. 50 years ago today, July 7th, 1936, the afternoon temperature was 101 degrees. It was part of a hot spell that started on July 4th and went through the 14th. And there were eight days in that period of time with temperatures over 100 degrees. 50 years ago today, it was 101. Today, we're at 85. Usually, we're at 83. The minimum was 64 this morning. And the record for the day, 20 degrees colder, 44 back in 1891. No precipitation. Sunrise, 534. Sunset tonight was at 902. 15 hours and 28 minutes to the nose between sunrise and sunset. Partly cloudy now, 74 degrees. The dew point and the humidity are the same, 59. The winds from the southeast at 8 miles an hour. The pressure is rising from 30.12. Partly cloudy and 74 degrees. Another hot day forecast for tomorrow out through the southwest and through the south and all along the eastern seaboard. This afternoon it was 100 degrees at Newark, talking about temperatures at 100. 102 at Baltimore. At 9 o'clock it's still 90 degrees at New York and 98 at Phoenix. Another hot day through the south and southeast. We've got a little storm system moving through South Dakota. Kicked up 50 mile an hour winds at Rapid City over the last couple of hours and small hail. Casper forecast for tomorrow at 88, Portland at 78. Still hot temperatures in the 90s in this pocket here from Austin to Miami to Boston. And a precipitation forecast through Wednesday morning from Idaho, western Montana, into the western Dakotas, out through Arizona, New Mexico, up through Colorado, along the Gulf tonight, Jackson, Mississippi, with street flooding and some heavy thunderstorms there. Rain forecast from Minnesota down through Missouri into uh, Ohio, western Pennsylvania. Heavy rains in northeastern Indiana tonight and storm damage in Niagara County, New York, and winds that moved out of Ontario. And our forecast will include this chance of rain that's moving through the western states just north of the Minnesota River, just north of Benson. Other showers around Brainerd moving east at 40 miles an hour. And we could get some rain by morning in the Twin Cities. We'll be 63 overnight. We're 74 right now. Southeast winds forecast for tomorrow. Variable cloudiness. Got a chance of rain. 84 for the high. Winds 5 to 15. Tuesday night will be clear to partly cloudy. 64 degrees. The Wednesday forecast of sunny to partly sunny and 85. 
chance of rain on Thursday and Friday before we start partly cloudy and another gorgeous weekend coming up. Temperatures during this period of time, upper 70s to low 80s and temperatures low 60s to mid 60s during the night time. So I'm looking forward to next Saturday already. All right, no 100 degree <laughs> stuff there. No. <laughs> Thank you very much, Brian. The most severe challenge to Philippine President Corazon Aquino's five-month-old government ended today. That's one of our stories in brief. One of her harshest political opponents came out from a Manila hotel today after changing his mind about forming a separate government. Arturo Tolentino is Marco's running mate in the February election. Yesterday, Tolentino engineered a short live revolt. Aquino aides reached a settlement with the Marcos loyalists today. French President Francois Mitterrand flew to Moscow today, just two days after attending the Statue of Liberty celebration. He and his wife were met by Soviet President Andrei Gromyko. Mitterrand will discuss arms control and human rights issues with Soviet leader Mikhail Gorbachev during his four-day visit. Parties mean garbage, and Philadelphia has lots of it on the sidewalks following the 4th of July celebration in that city. The reason, a week-old city workers' strike. The city is asking residents to keep the garbage bags inside until this strike is over. Rising piles of garbage, we are told, started to really stink today as the temperatures topped 90 in Philly. Ethanol, a gasoline additive. Some say it's good for drivers and for Minnesota farmers. And when the 10 p.m. report continues, we'll see why and how dropping oil prices are affecting the sale of ethanol gas. in old Milwaukee both mean something great to these guys. Mount Hood means the best summer skiing in America. And old Milwaukee means a great beer. Cold, crisp old Milwaukee beer and smooth, golden old Milwaukee light. There's nothing like the flavor of a special place in old Milwaukee beer. Old Milwaukee and old Milwaukee light. Man, it doesn't get any better than this. Shop the all-star sale at Menards for hot savings on cool comfort. Whole room air conditioners are on sale now. They're a breeze to install, and prices start at just $199. Save on old-fashioned ceiling fans, too, including close mount and spitter style. Oscillating safety fans are on sale, too. Or keep your cool with this three-speed oscillator on sale now for just $14.88. Don't miss the all-star sale going on now at Menards. We're helping you build America's heart. Farmers are not getting any help at the gasoline pump, even though it had appeared they would. The farmer's corn makes ethanol for gasoline. More than 200 million bushels of the corn from American farmers went into making ethanol last year. But now what? What happens now that many gasoline stations stop selling gasoline with ethanol? Alan Cox reports tonight on what's happening and why. No ethanol represents the latest sign of the gas war among service stations. One owner says the introduction of ethanol last winter cost 10 to 15 percent of his business. Not any trouble with the cars, just poor acceptance of the product, uh, not knowing exactly what was in the product. We put up a sign uh, the first day that we got pure gasoline back and our volume was back to normal within three days. Some motorists complain that ethanol makes their cars start hard and run rough. Automakers are ambivalent. Manuals for new Chryslers say the company doesn't recommend alcohol fuels, but it doesn't expressly prohibit ethanol either. Normally what the manufacturers recommend if they begin experiencing troubles with their vehicle is to switch back to a gasoline that does not have the alcohol lens and see if that cures the problem. But what ethanol does to cars, allegedly or otherwise, isn't its only problem. The cheaper price of oil makes ethanol less attractive as an additive to gasoline, even with the tax break. Certified pure by Amoco, right on the pump. It's the Amoco says it's not trying to disparage ethanol. Amoco still uses it in regular leaded gas. But the company says research shows people who buy expensive grades want pure petroleum. Farm groups aren't buying that argument. We think the proof is there that it is not harmful and that we think it's unfortunate the major oil companies have put their own self-interest first. Some companies, like Cinex, owned by a farm cooperative, continue to promote ethanol. Other station owners say it will take another rise in gas prices, if not a full-blown crisis, to make fuel from corn appetizing to them. Alan Cox, WCCO Television News. Mike, the Twins are playing so well that Ralph John has a prediction he's going to make at the end of the sportscast. <laughs> You're going to force me into that. Yeah. Huh? Oh, they got another breather, another breather at the Dome tonight. The Twins and the Tigers. We'll have that story coming up next on Sports.
crisp. That's the Hardee's Chef Inside Salads. Cool lettuce and fresh carrots. Red cabbage. Ripe, juicy tomatoes. Eggs. Cheddar cheese. Real bacon. Tender ham and turkey. The Hardy Chef and Side Salads. Two refreshing choices. Cool, crisp, and fresh to go. Even though you faithfully pay your premiums, why do some insurance companies make you feel so guilty? I had an accident. Do you have an estimate? Two estimates? Three estimates. And a note from your mother. My mother? Leave it to the good hands, people. In most cases, Allstate will give you a settlement on the spot without three estimates or a note from your mother. How do we know it's her writing? Mm -hmm. You're in good hands with Allstate. A member of the Sears Financial Network. We heard earlier from Vikings head coach Jerry Burns as well as Pete Rozelle regarding the NFL commissioner's mandate for drug testing in the National Football League beginning this fall. Everyone seems to agree the drug problem must cease, but there's a difference of opinion as to the solution. Vikings general manager Mike Lynn told me he's 100% in favor of Pete Rozelle's plan. The Viking punter Greg Coleman offered the view of many players. Well, I think the integrity of the game is, uh, is more important. I'm not sure how the commissioner um, was able to, to mandate this, if this was the, uh, the reason for, uh, for his ruling. But, uh, uh, but as far as the integrity of the game, I think it's, it's time that, the, uh, that something be done in this area. Uh, I, I think the Players Association will you know, do everything within its power uh, to fight this, not to say that we're fighting you know, because we don't want we're not in support or anything, but we bargained for this in the collective bargaining agreement uh, back in 82. As you remember, we, there was a long strike, and, and that was part of it, you know, the drug testing issue. But uh, I think by, by Pete, uh, the commissioner, just imposing a mandatory drug testing without working in conjunction with Gene Upshaw and the National Players Association, you know, it's very unfortunate that, uh, that he's doing this at this time. The Vikings, meanwhile, in an effort to create an aftercare program for players who are chemically dependent, have hired former Viking Pro Bowler Carl Eller as a drug consultant. Until the players digest the details of the proposal, reaction has been limited, but nonetheless direct and to the point. He proposed to implement the program totally from the commissioner's office, not having the owners or management involved in this testing. Uh, and it's a drastic change in our working relationship with management. Commissioner Roselle doesn't pay my check, you know. Uh, Al Davis does. You know, if Al Davis wants me to do something, I do what Al Davis says. He's my boss. Did I say the Twins had a breather against the Tigers at the Dome tonight? It is now 10-8 after having a five-run lead. 10-8, the Twins lead the Tigers, who are 2-11 and on our artificial turf. That's in the eighth inning. Kent Herbie continues his torrid pace, hitting another one of those patented upper deck smashes. This one off Randy O'Neill, the Tigers starter in the first inning. This one ties it at one all. Boom, there it goes, and it's number 20 for Herbick. He has 60 RBIs. That's home run number 120 for the Twins this season. Kent Herbick with number 20. Kirby Puckett with another big night. Puckett, all he has done is has a single, a double, and this triple, and a pair of RBIs. This one brought the Twins within one at 3-2 in the third. They took a, a big lead, but now it's 10-8, as we said. Now, watch this bit of controversy. Greg Gagne drills one to left, but the play at the plate is what you want to keep your eye on. Steve Lombardo as he runs out, the out of the baseline to avoid the tag on the throw coming up here, but he's ruled safe by umpire Terry Cooney. Watch. He is out of the baseline. You have to be able to touch the base from where you are running. And Lombardozzi got by with one on that play, as Sparky Anderson argues in vain for the Detroit Tigers. 10-8, Twins in the eighth, as we said. Seattle losing to Toronto 7-5. Other scores 6-4 for Oakland over Boston in the ninth inning. Roger Clemens was in on that one. Uh, let's see, Chicago beat Cleveland 4-3. That's the final. The Yankees got out the big lumber, 14-3 over the Rangers. Baltimore in the ninth leads Kansas City 8-1. California and Milwaukee are just underway in the National League. Houston bomb Montreal 12-1. Cincinnati over the Mets 7-6. Philly over uh, Atlanta, 7-3. Another final, 1-0. The Dodgers beat the Cardinals. And Pittsburgh, San Diego are scoreless in the fourth inning. Prediction. What's the prediction? Prediction. The Twins. They're going to win the pennant. In the Western Division? Yep. 
<laughs> Mark my words. Yeah. You can recall <laughs> that in October that you heard it here, right here on this July program. All, All right. right. Very good. Thank you, Ralph. What a team. What a team. Okay. Tomorrow's weather's going to be, uh, I think, pretty cloudy and showery, right? With some humidity. Chance of showers. Yeah. 84 degrees. That's what it says there. All right. <laughs> That's the news. We thank you for joining us. Remember, you heard it here first. Good night. Good night. <laughs> Take the rush out of rush hour by going home with me, Cannon, tomorrow afternoon at 3. When everyone wants pizza, but they want it every which way, go for pizza by the slice in six different combinations, only at Rocky Rococo. I put to you this simple proposition. Save your gums or lose your teeth. Gum disease is what causes most tooth loss. From age 35, it strikes three out of four, three out of four. And by age 60, over a fourth have lost all their teeth, mainly to gum disease. Consider your chances. What can you do about gum disease? See your American Dental Association dentist. Don't wait till it hurts. WCCO Television, tomorrow. supposed to do you today? No, I just want to buy some shampoo. Nexus, is that any good? Yeah. Yeah? Is that all? Yeah? Well, yeah. We we'll use their whole line. Anything better? Not in my opinion. Hi, what's up? Just need some shampoo. You're not much of a salesman, are you? No, I'm an artist. Nexus products, sold at hairstyling salons for use at home. In the land Come on in hungry for our classic hot dog. Tasty, plump, and juicy with ketchup and mustard. Or with chili. Or melted cheese. Mmm, what a taste. Maybe that's why so many people enjoy hot dogs at Dairy Queen every year. Come on in and taste why just about everybody's favorite hot dogs come from Dairy Queen. This is Charlie Boone of WCCO Radio. Say, did you know that you can tell a lot about someone's personality by the perfume or cologne that person wears? Tomorrow morning at 10, we'll hear more when perfume expert Teresa Davis joins me on The Charlie Boone Show. For more CCO Radio information, call The Connection at 922-9000. What can I do for you? I'd like to apply for a loan. Name? Um, uh, Chuck. What do you do for a living, Chuck? Well, I have a little How much do you make? On, uh, Any debts or assets? Are you married or cohabiting, Chucky? Ever had a loan before? Do you smoke other than cigarettes? Ever been arrested? Do you sleep well? Any kinky habits? If borrowing money brings out the beast in you, escape to TCF. We'll give you an answer within eight hours on all kinds of loans. You eat any strange food?